before we get started with the questions, would you mind introducing yourself with your name, where you work, and any other information you would like to share? Sure. Hi, my name is Gabby Hernandez. I'm the Open Education Librarian at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. This is my second year sitting in this role as the Open Education Librarian, and I look forward to this interview. What is your current job description? And this can include any duties that are assigned to you, what your typical day looks like, or what your biggest uh, goals are in your current job. So as the Open Education Librarian, I facilitate open educational resource adoption, adaption, and creation uh, at the institution through advocacy, training, outreach, organization, and collaborative efforts with faculty, students, staff, administrators, and the community of open educators as a whole. And currently, um, my duties include lots and lots and lots of outreach to different um, stakeholders across campus. Um, I host workshops both uh, independently through the library and in partnership with other departments across campus. I also um, engage in professional development both personally and providing professional development to different stakeholders. And that could be um, library staff or just in general staff at the university and of course faculty and students. And I engage in efforts to reward faculty for their efforts and um, going towards open education. And that could be um, either a monetary reward or just uh, recognition for their hard work that they're doing, as well as committee work and collection development work. And a typical day um, on the job is I try to set aside a little bit of time to kind of read and catch up on the listservs and what's happening in the field of open education. Um, it's a fairly new and emerging field. So there's changes that are happening almost daily. Uh, so I try to set aside some time to make sure I'm reading and keeping up with what's happening now to be able to offer that to my faculty and to um, provide this information to staff. I do lots and lots and lots of outreach and lots of content creation. So typically, I am the first person in this role at UTRGV. So um, there's a lot of original content creation. So uh, everything is pretty much made either from scratch or getting ideas from other people who have worked um, as an open education librarian and have been kind enough to share their work. So, you know, things like brainstorming ideas for new programs and new outreach opportunities for students and faculty. Uh, website content, I have created both a library guide and a textbook affordability project website for our faculty to use. Um, marketing, website content, uh, infographics, outreach communication, registration forms, call for proposals, presentations, you name it, I've created it. So that was something that I wasn't, I didn't really think about before I applied for the position, but it is really, really fun to be able to create um, almost on a daily and brainstorm on new ways and new things I can do to help our faculty adopt open educational resources or just textbook affordability practices. And my biggest goals right now that I have are to increase the number of zero cost and low cost courses that are offered at UTRGV. And that doesn't necessarily mean uh, OER adoption or the adoption of open educational resources, just having some sort of transparency when it comes to the cost of textbooks. So that way, when our students register for class, they understand exactly how much they need to budget for their textbooks, whether that be absolutely nothing because there's no textbook or the textbook is provided by the library or it's an open educational resource or it's faculty created content or maybe it's a low cost course. So that would be um, any type of material, learning material that's less than $40. So maybe the textbook costs less than $40 or um, there's a homework system or an access code, but all of that will be $40 or less. 
So it helps with student planning. And that's one of our biggest goals right now is to have that transparency with our students and allow them to understand what they need to plan for when registering for a class. I also want to raise the student awareness of um, open educational resources and textbook affordability and the initiatives that the university is putting forth to ensure that they have access to the materials that they need. And of course, implementing more open educational practices on campus and educating faculty about open pedagogy and um, backwards design and, you know, uh, renewable assignments. So things where they can create, uh, where students can create content and have it be um, utilized and used beyond just that grade. Um, so more student-centered learning where students are engaged and have, um, so yeah, uh, student-centered learning where students are engaged and they feel proud of the work they're doing because they know it's gonna be seen and used by other students either locally or globally. I do work with the bookstore yeah. um, and we'd have some conversations there and I, we are a team of three. So it's the scholarly communications librarian, the open education librarian, and the institutional repository specialist. And so the institutional repository specialist really focuses on the institutional repository itself and getting things um, uploaded into the repository. And then our scholarly communications librarian oversees both of us. And so he really looks at the global picture of our department. And then I focus on uh, the open education portion. So all of the things that I just talked about, and we also have one other person who is a faculty fellow for academic affairs. And so he is a faculty member, but he is very much engaged in this work and he helps us as well. So we are a very small team, but we are mighty and I feel like we have a big impact on campus. You already mentioned a little bit about um, some of the digital work you do, but if you want to expand on that and talk about any maybe if you work with any specific digital collections or anything related specifically to Texas that you think is really cool. So in my work as the open education librarian, I mainly work with open educational resources. And those are free teaching and learning materials that can be used, modified or reused without having to ask for copyright permission because of the open licensing associated with the materials. And so that's really the digital materials that I work with, implementing these digital resources into courses and classes. And I also work with, and we're building the infrastructure to be able to have the creation of OER happen on our campus and to engage in open pedagogical practices and have those types of resources then created and hosted inside of our institu uh, institutional repository. Um, so, and so the kinds of digital collections I work with, I really don't work with them, but I definitely search them. Uh, I search institutional repositories as well as open repositories um, and any collection that has been created by universities or so like uh, independent publishing or um, campus uh, publishers, I search those digital collections and kind of collect and curate content to then be uh, provided to our faculty in an easier digestible format. So I do uh, create different mini collections on different topics so faculty can see what type of OER is available for their subject instead of having to search every repository out there. And specific to Texas, we do have our own OER repository called OER Text. And it's a really, really interesting tool. And what you can do is when you search it, you can not only connect with other institutions that are engaging and creating OER, but you can see what Texas faculty have either created for their course and published openly, 
or what are some open educational resources that Texas faculty members are using uh, in their course and they have uploaded that into the repository as well. So it's really cool to see which institutions are champions of OER creation and utilization across Texas. What is your educational and career background and what brought you to digital libraries? So my educational and career background is, I would say a little bit unique. Um, I received my undergraduate uh, degree at Texas State in interdisciplinary studies and I am a Texas certified teacher and I taught for seven years, um, first grade through fourth grade. And I taught both in the Austin area as well as where I currently am uh, in the Rio Grande Valley. And so I kind of split that up. I spent three years in the, in the Austin area and four years in my current area teaching students. But my overall goal and the reason I became a Texas teacher was because I thought I wanted to be a, um, a school librarian. So I decided to uh, go ahead and go back to school and get my degree. And that kind of changed a little bit. Instead of going to a school librarianship, I decided to go the route of public librarianship because I felt that my background in teaching would set me up well to be a youth services librarian in a public library. And so I worked part-time as a youth services librarian. No, I'm sorry. I worked part-time as a youth services librarian assistant for the entirety of my degree. So I was taking classes and working part-time at the same time. And when it came time for me to complete my practicum, I actually ran into a small problem and I wasn't able to volunteer for the city I worked for as well as work there part-time. So I was in kind of a dilemma and I decided to take a leap of faith and I reached out to the local academic libraries and asked if they would host my practicum there. And I completely fell in love with just the possibilities and the variety that academic librarianship offers, which um, I didn't even really know about because I was kind of, you know, in my little path of youth services. So I completed my practicum at an academic library. And in that time, I was able to spend my time in every single different department learning how all the different departments work and how they work together in certain areas and how they are also very independent in other ways as well. And right after um, I received my degree, a part-time position for an open educational resource librarian came up at, to the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. And I went ahead and applied and tried, and I was able to transition from that part-time position to a full-time position, and I couldn't be happier. Um, my path wasn't uh, necessarily straight. It was a little winding, and I am so happy to be doing the work I'm doing and to be able to relate what I learned and experienced as a K-12 teacher to really understand what faculty members are going through in their courses and time constraints and how long it takes to create original content, which is what a lot of K-12 teachers do, as well as seeing how a lot of the practices that I um, implemented in my classroom as a K-12 teacher, I see those same um, practices now being implemented in higher ed. And so it's really interesting. And I feel like I can have lots of conversations with faculty and relate to their needs in the classroom. So uh, even though I do have that early education background, I see how it can connect um, when it comes to finding open educational resources uh, for faculty, as well as how to understand backwards design and look at a curriculum and see where we can implement certain teaching practices or um, certain materials in their course. There is so much work within our field. And sometimes I think we do students a disservice when we don't expose them to the true possibilities. So in my short time, 
I have I've graduated and I've been a librarian for a little over two years. And in that time, I was um, a youth service assistant. I was a youth services librarian and now an open education librarian. So I worked in the children's department and then I was able to work in the teens department as the librarian. And now I work um, in an academic setting and they're so different, but also so very connected. And a lot of the things I learned about programming um, in the public library is a lot of the things how I'm implementing in the academia world. And as well as like I was talking about the things I learned as a teacher in K-12 and youth services are there still some things there that we can relate to and uh, implement in academia as well? Um, so yes, there are just so many possibilities out there in our career and our field. And, uh, you know, I, I may, I'm, I'm happy that I took that leap and just, you know, took a look at what academia library, academic librarianship had to offer. Um, and, I, and I couldn't be happier. I'm, I'm so, so happy to have made the transition, even though I still feel very close to my roots as an early educator. What do you love about digital libraries and what keeps you motivated to work in this field? What I love about digital libraries is the constant innovation. I feel like I am a pioneer in this field every single day. Um, I get to try new things, you know, like I said, this is a position that had never been created before. So I'm really paving the way of what this role could possibly look like. And I think digital libraries are really amazing about giving people the opportunity to do so. Um, I can, I love that I get to lead either new initiatives or scale initiatives that weren't able to be done prior to my role being set as a full-time role. But on the other hand, it can be super overwhelming at times. Um, there's a lot of things that we're juggling all at the same time. So it can feel uh, a little daunting and not having that clear path of, you know, this is where you should go can also be a little scary. But for me, when I see faculty engage in this work, it just motivates me even more. Um, they're so excited and they're so willing to help and wanting to try new things that it makes me want to continue to help them, as well as when I hear student stories. So I get to work with textbook affordability and I hear what students have to do or have done um, or their daily struggles when it comes to affording higher education but they're still there and they still go to courses and they still go to class and they still try, even though they're struggling with all of these different things. It also motivates me to continue my work. It like recharges my batteries and, uh, you know, helps me create that next outreach opportunity for faculty or for students to engage in this work. Do you think um, open educational resources are the future of academia like do you think more and more courses will be turning towards those instead of um textbooks you have to spend lots of money on um i hope uh that it becomes more widely used and widely accepted but i always defer back to what is best for our students to learn the content that and the learning objectives that are set by the course. Um, and maybe that's an open educational resource because it's free. And maybe that's a traditional textbook because that's what's available. Or maybe it's a library licensed material. So something that the library can purchase for the students. I don't think that there's one best resource, but it's nice to have this you know, new field and open educational resources are constantly being created for both lower and, upper, uh, lower and upper level courses. And so I feel like the more we talk about it and the more we engage in these conversations, the more we can have a more equitable, uh, we can have more equitable resources within higher education. And what's really wonderful about OER and what I think that separates it apart from other resources is not actually the cost savings, but the ability to modify it. So the ability to 
input more diverse voices or have unique viewpoints added in or diff, you know, differing viewpoints. Um, I think that's what takes education to the next level beyond just it being a free resource. So yes, I do hope that it becomes more, a more common practice amongst faculty members in higher education. What are digital libraries? It seems like everyone kind of has their own definition. So how would you define digital libraries and digital librarianship? So I also think I have a kind of unique um, definition of digital libraries and digital librarianship, because to me, a digital library is any library that is looking at the current possibility that technology affords us and reimagining their current services to implement uh, technological advances within current library services. Um, and I also see digital librarianship in the same way where, you know, what are librarians doing to utilize digital resources um, or software to enhance the library itself or the services that we provide to our patrons? So I see it more as a broad umbrella, like is this library implementing digital practices, new technology into the library uh, to keep up with technological advances of today? So I bring it back to my personal experiences. So working as a youth services uh, librarian assistant, you know, what were we doing to add technology? Um, you know, what services were we providing that help students and children keep up with the technology, the technological advances, as well as, you know, especially when I was uh, working as a teen librarian. Our teens are very, very, very into technology. Their school requires lots of techn technology. Um, so creating computer classes and things like that, where we're engaging students uh, and just people in general and how to advance their knowledge of technology. And then with academia, um, you know, we have institutional repositories and metadata librarians and all of these other things, uh, uh, systems librarians, where they're really working with like a fully online and digital environment. So I think to me, it kind of spans that, could it span that entire range? And then what are some common challenges that digital librarians face? Honestly, I feel like one of the biggest challenges for digital librarians um, is capacity. So there's so many amazing things and projects and opportunities that could be integrated into uh, whichever institution or library you're working at. But again, like I said, we are a very small team, uh, so we can't do everything even though we may want to. Uh, so I would say that that kind of holds us back at certain times, you know, really having to analyze which outreaches can I do that is gonna make the most impact, but also where I can still provide great service. Um, and, you know, in a perfect world, we wouldn't have to make those decisions. We would always be able to say, yes, we can help you. We can provide that service. Um, but did I, I, from my experience, uh, digital librarianship, you're either working solo or with a very small team. So again, that capacity to be able to do everything you want doesn't always exist. How do you think digital libraries and digital uh, sorry, digital librarians and digital libraries will change in the next few and the next five years. So digital libraries and librarianship, I feel like are ever changing. Uh, I can't imagine that I would be having the same conversation that I'm having right now in five years. I don't think my position will look the same. I don't think my daily duties would be the same. Um, I think again, with technological advances, um, new resources, new software, new opportunities, you know, I think whatever comes, a digital library or a digital librarianship has to change and mold to those new exciting opportunities. Uh, so 
I think also that there will be more specific roles within librarianship over the more broad roles that we have right now. So like, let's say a scholarly communications librarian. That can mean so many different things. It can mean somebody who is familiar with the institutional repository. It can mean somebody who works with OER. It could mean somebody who works with copyright. It could be someone who works with open access and open publishing. Like it could mean so many different things. And often it is, they are one umbrella that works on all of those things. So what my hope is that in the next five years, those positions will turn into more uh, specific roles. Like mine is an open education librarian. So I work with open education and open educational practices, not necessarily, you know, I touch on some of those other topics, but there's another person on my team that could maybe take on copyright and another person that could take on the institutional repository and so on and so forth. So my hope is that in the next five years, the positions will go from very broad um, positions to more specific positions to help create better services for our um, patrons. What do you think library and information science programs should be teaching students about digital libraries? And what advice do you have for students who are interested in pursuing a career in digital librarianship? I think that LAS programs should really talk more about the possibilities because there's so, so, so many. And also have students look to the future that just because these are the current positions that are available right now doesn't mean that there's not going to be new ones um, and new titles that are going to come out very soon or in the near future because of the way things are changing. Even my role as an open education librarian, there's not a whole lot of us out there, um, but I regularly keep track of the job boards and I see that oh, okay, well now this state is getting one or this university is getting one and this university is getting one. So it's starting to become more common where maybe you know, five years ago, maybe you wouldn't have ever seen what this title is. So um, I would say um, as an advice to students is just keep track of what's jobs are being posted. What does it look like? What are the responsibilities attached to it? Um, don't look at the title and say, I don't know if that fits me. Really click on all of them and look at what are the responsibilities and the job duties, um, because that could that could spark an interest or an idea or say, oh, I wonder if there's a librarianship in this part or in this part. Um, it's hard to know because everything does change so quickly when it comes to, you know, digital libraries and digital librarianship. And there's just so many paths that are possible. So I think um, programs could do a better job of enlightening students on how to discover different paths. Um, and for students, my advice would be to just keep an eye out and watch those job boards and, and see what's out there and see what may be of interest to you and to never be has to to not hesitate to try something new if you think you might be interested there are just so many different there's so many different titles to positions and it could mean the exact same thing as a different job title or it could be the same job title and it's two totally different uh responsibilities so i would say just really look into them click on them read them uh sign up for you know for job boards and, and look at them nationwide. Maybe you're looking, maybe you live in Texas, but see what other states are doing. And maybe that can give you an opportunity to say, oh, I really like what this state's doing. Let me see if any library within Texas is doing that same thing. Um, so don't, uh, don't zoom out a little bit to really see what this field has to offer because it's a lot.